Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Pillars of Eternity 2. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today. Uh, as I got a loading screen that told me that Knockdown is versus Fortitude. Why is Knockdown versus Fortitude? You mean to tell me that a super strong, mighty character... I guess Fortitude is for, for health, isn't it? I suppose it makes some sense. Uh, or rather, Constitution is for Fortitude. Yeah, I can, I, I can see that. I can see that happening. I can see that happening. This game and its things. The next <sighs> step of this dance winnows our would-be champions. The bloodletting. I don't know what winnows is. I mean, uh, what we know to win to winnow, but it it the next step does winnow our would-be champions. Uh, bloodletting. That sounds ominous. The last of the trials. The bloodletting pits you against other contenders, each undergoing their own rite of passage. In their triumph, the victorious shall complete the rite and secure their place within the crucible. To them alone shall the island reveal the first of its mysteries. Uh, no harm in a little competition, as long as we make it to the top and stay there, right, Captain? Killing others is the price of admission? It is an honor to progress into the Crucible. The winner gains glory. The fallen contribute their memories to this place. Either way, the competition is a form of immortality. I'm not doing this. You may choose to turn away, but this place needs you. If you reject that calling, many may suffer in your stead. She frowns down at the shining water. The pool of memories awaits you. Okay. No choice. That's bad. That's really bad. I... That's really bad. Hmm. Well, I guess the choice is made for me. We must murder people in the arena. So be it. We will murder people who have basically the same exact motivations as I am. So that's the immediate... It's usually a telltale sign of immorality. Usually, usually a, a telltale sign of immorality. Not necessarily all the time. I, well, at least I can't think of a... Right now I can't think of a time uh, of an exception to that rule. But, you know, that can, you never say never, I suppose. Um, but, yeah. Now, the, uh, the why it's bad from a game, st uh, game design standpoint is that I fully expected... Uh, well, I didn't fully expect it, to be honest, but I expect a uh, an alternative quest line to this. Maybe dismantle this whole nonsense and, you know, just uh, acknowledge the subtext of what is so far presented to us, which is the fact that uh, Galloway is the bloodthirsty god that is basically evil. Um, as many of the gods are, to be honest. Um, but it's actually, that's an interesting, that's an interesting thing to think about right now. Uh, Tyranny, the game that came after Pills of Eternity won, uh, Tyranny sort of embraced this whole notion that the, the ones in charge in that game anyway uh, were evil uh, and, uh, and immoral, at least in to a larger extent. And... Um, and it was sort of the, them the thematic underli underlying... Uh, current of, of the um, of that game, but Pillars of Eternity it, it, it is no better. It just doesn't have that as a subtext, or at least not necessarily. Which is an interesting take. I guess it makes more sense. Well, it's not that it makes more sense. I guess it makes sense in a, in in regards to it being an RPG. You can always get away when you make an RPG. You can always get away with making. Uh, with with uh, shying away from a thematic approach in regards to morality, and you can just do other themes in general. But because it's an RPG, because your character can can uh, can make choices, um, you can absolutely just not have an, a moral approach to storytelling. Unfortunately, when your character cannot make choices, um, you have to have a moral approach to storytelling. Uh, otherwise you risk uh, detaching your player from your character, which in this case I absolutely am detached from my character because there's no choice here. So, in the name of content, 
I well, I sh also not necessarily in the name of content. In this case, it is in the name of content because I'm doing an RPG. But if oh, no, I don't, I'm doing a, I'm not doing an RPG. Unfortunately, I'm doing a let's play. Uh, but if I were playing by myself, it would be in the name of just seeing what happens. But absolutely detached uh, from from the character. It's um, it's a thing that I'm sure many of you have gone through. I have definitely have gone through when you just play a game, role playing, and be like, oh, I'm just making all the choices and whatnot. Uh, sometimes maybe you're role playing yourself, which is a common way of playing role playing games. Uh, even though, not, in my opinion, definitely not the most engaging, but certainly a way to do it. Um, and then you role play to see, uh, or you you play the game again to see what the other choices are. Uh, and usually, in my experience, uh, that other playthrough where you just make the opposite choices or play the evil way or well, the, maybe the good way if you just play the evil way first or something, uh, but Generally, I would say that the that detaching yourself from those choices tends to be an easy way to to play through the game in a different way, and uh, that feeling of detachment is not good. I mean, it's not that it's not good. It's not that it hurts or anything. It's just that it's bad. It's bad game design. <laughs> if you need to detach yourself to um, if you need to detach yourself from a character to role play that character. Uh, that's usually a failing of the game design, and I admit, in in computer role-playing games, it's difficult to do it otherwise. Um, it's difficult because, you know, tabletop role-playing games are a lot easier for you to create an evil character and role-play that evil character. Well, I'll say it's easy, but, you know, it's tricky as well, because you're going to need to make choices, evil choices, and you need to be evil, to actively be evil, or role-play being evil, which is the same. Well, not the same as in the consequences, but at least the same as in uh, what goes inside you. Uh, so th that's yeah, that that sort of it's sort of method acting, unless well, it is absolutely method acting because you can't uh, if you don't know what method acting is, it's it, it's related to movies. But when you're acting in movies, you can just read the lines and do what you know, do with the expressions that you're told to do, and that's a very old school way of. Um, a very old school way of acting, uh, but and I say movies and theater is the same. Uh, but w more modern actors uh, use something called method acting, which is uh, where you actively feel the emotions that you're supposed to be feeling. And there's ways to achieve that, um, but still, the the feel that feeling of that those feelings that you put yourself through, those are very real. And you read uh, if you read and hear interviews from actors who go through acting evil characters or characters that are just uh, difficult to play or because they're either like too emotional or too, too uh, hysterical usually are difficult to play or difficult to method act um, I, what was the there was one there's one famous one where this this actor just basically socially socially isolated himself uh, for months or years or something, and then he basically came out a jerk because he was supposed to play a jerk in the movie. I don't remember what movie is it was. I don't. I, I didn't watch it. Uh, but the point is, in role in tabletop role playing games, and I ramble about all the things. I'm sorry, but in tabletop role playing games, you absolutely are method acting because you're not writing your character. You're acting it on the spot. If either if it's on person or on the internet. It's still you're you're making it up as it goes, and you're feeling you, 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 you and the process of of, of uh, making it up is your your gut reaction to what is happening in the tabletop role playing game. In a video game, that doesn't happen because you have your choices presented to you, so you have a much more in, it's it's inherently more detached experience. Uh, but it doesn't have to be super detached because you know you you can still engage with it as as if you were trying to put yourself in the skin of your own character or of your own self if you want which is totally fine uh in this case it is detached there's no choice the choice is not to do the quest that's not a choice that is not a choice if there was a choice it's what i was saying we should at least acknowledge unlike the 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 big for me, I think one of the biggest advantage of computer role-playing game design, uh, or biggest advantage, big, biggest advances of computer role-playing game design, is something that was probably introduced in the earliest example, anyway, that I can think of, is um, Planescape Torment. Um, but many games have done it since then, 
and I don't know of any other role play, a computer role-playing game that did it before Planescape Torment, uh, which is allowing your character to say things that don't actually have a result in the game, or don't necessarily have a huge result in the game. You, like, it, do, it doesn't change the quest line. We could be doing the same exact thing, but by the mere fact that you're having a choice in your dialogue, and your, the characters are immediately reacting, it allows you to rationalize the same action as dif as a different morality. And that's how real life works. That People do largely the same things and still have vastly different moralities. You can go to work every day and just interact with people, the same, like, interact with the same people, but just have vastly different moralities because morality isn't only about what you do. It's And it's largely not about what you do, it's about how you approach what you do. So it is about what you do, but it's more about how you uh, approach what you do. So that's why I think Planescape Torment was definitely very um, ground... It was groundbreaking in that regard, which is the realization that you can just have vast dialogue trees, or at least options, um, that will allow you to roleplay different characters while going through the same in-game events and interacting with the same in-game characters and all this sort of stuff. And for, of course, for a computer role-playing games, that's very important, you know, restricting the amount of in-game events and in-game characters that you interact with, because that's a, 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 that's a matter of, of um, cost. It, it costs money and costs development uh, time to make different events, depending on your choices. So, yeah, that's my ramble. The fourth and final battle in any rite of passage pits two packs of contenders against each other. Two teams will enter the Crucible, but only one will earn Tawamohawe's blessing and emerge alive. There is no victory in subduing the other into surrender. The Crucible demands a sacrifice, and only through the loser's death shall the victor advance. So yeah. It, if this were part of the original game it would feel out of place. Because it is a DLC, it feels out of place. Our newest crop gathers for the culling. Their task is simple. Slain or be slain. Those who survive earn the right to contend for the champion's crown. Let the hunt commence. I really wish they wouldn't speak offset, because I'm listening to this on headphones, and headphones always gets the uh, all headphones. It all appears only one of us will be finding greatness in the crucible. Oh, it's the Pilton. Oh, of course, who couldn't see that coming? Yeah, headphones always uh, act differently than speakers uh, when it comes to sound offset to left and right, and I hate it. I hate it when things are not centered. Not well. They're not super uncentered, but it's just it's weird. They're to the right. Um, dressed in gaudy armor, the diminutive Pipilton taps his brow in an impish salute. Any last words before you die? The Orlan flourishes his weapon in a flashy, but wholly impractical series of mock slices and parries. I'm sorry, who are you again? Have we met? Enough of this. Let's give the crowd something to remember, shall we? He draws his weapon and signals his group to attack. So he hadn't drawn his weapon before when he said, Come on. Come on, riders. And look Let's at a... Teach these students what it means to be an alpha predator. Let's, um... I don't know what he means to be an alpha predator, although he says, he says that a few times. Uh... Hey. Hey. Yes, Captain. Okay, we're in a good position here. It's good. You have my attention. I do, don't I? That's usually how it goes. Uh They're pretty good at reflex re defense. Let's see what I can do. Oh. That's not ideal. <laughs> it definitely does work. Uh, are we good? Yes, we are. Okay, let's bring you up over here. Oh, you're in a good position already. Uh, that's pretty good. Let's get you a little bit closer, though. Uh, it doesn't change much. Uh, we got some paralyzes. We got some people on the floor already. And, uh, I am gonna cast this right there. 
And, uh... Actually, that's a bad idea. Let's cast it... Oh, you can't move it beyond your line of sight. Maybe it's because he ca started casting it already. Okay. That's pretty good. And we got the built-in in there. Let's go ahead and get a heal out. And uh, I can do a little bit of uh, maggots. Always very nice maggots. Lovely creatures. Very tasty, I hear. Never, never tried it. Okay, good stuff. Maggots really are the best of insects, to be honest. <laughs> I guess they're not necessarily in insects, they're just a part, uh, a, a stage of life. It's like saying, babies are the best of mammals. Yeah, that's tr true, generally speaking. Uh, okay, so this, things are going badly. Things are not going that great. Yeah, you're taking damage, aren't you? Mm -hmm. oh, no, don't hit you. Let's do this in here. Oh, okay, I, I see what she was going for. And Ishiza is alive. We got birds. If I didn't know better, I would think that's wild magic surge. Getting birds all over the place. That did, didn't it? Good job. And we got ourselves the Maw of Ingimirk. Ingimirk was a... Young boy. Soul energy swirls about you, pressing heavily against your esoteric senses. With a slight exertion of will, you can direct the ambient essence. And we have a similar choice to what we had at the end of the first game. Although, not necessarily all the options, but some of them. Return the soul essence to the crucible and the wildlife of Kazuwari. Uh, which is interesting, because you'd think those would be mutually exclusive, but they're not. The crucible and the wildlife are one and the same. It somehow. Channel the soul essence into Muatu, empowering him. Uh, I do need that, don't I? Sure. Since I'm detached, I can, I'm free to make any option whatsoever. Uh, absorb the soul essence for yourself and send the soul essence to the wheel. Let's go with Muatu. As you pour the power into Muatu, your ghostly guide shimmers brightly. He looks as if... Or has uh, had his hands as if seeing them for the first time and you feel a profound sense of gratitude from him. Yeah, cannibalism. Soul cannibalism, which is worse. Glorious combat reveals our contender from amongst the challengers! I should point out that it's worse within this context, within this setting. It's not worse in, from a moral standpoint, because... In this setting, killing people is not as bad as killing people in real life. Let's just put it like that. Because in this setting, this, their souls go on to do other things. Whereas in real life, they, they don't. Rest and return of you, for the crowd is eager to see you hunt again, contender. Not that this is still, not that this isn't the immoral here, what we're doing, mind you. It's just, you know, in a scale, if you, if you, if you must put things in a scale, or in a, I suppose, spectrum, I, I guess it's a little bit less, worse. I think maybe that's where the game is coming from, with this whole thing about, uh, you know, oh, you must, otherwise people will die. No, people will die because I do. Because I kill them. That's why they die. And then everything else is not my fault. Although, you know, it's not, that's just, you need a secondary option if you're... <sighs> the pool of memories is what, really? Two S's? Uh, water... Is because it shouldn't have that one. It should be the pool of memories. It still would be memories. But. Anyway. The pool of memories is water seems more translucent than before. Than before and Humaire gestures towards the front with an open palm. Congratulations, contender. Having endured the rite of passage, you earned the privilege to compete with other proven hunters. She scoops a talisman from the pool and holds it dripping before you. This token represents you and no other. Wear it proudly. It shall drink the essence of your actions, your triumphs, and your accomplishments. That the souls within these sacred walls will recognize them on your return. This had better be worth it. She returns your comment with a silent bow. Your next challenge will take you outside the walls of this arena. The island demands an offering. Something to feed the pool of memories. Some relics sacred to this place have been taken and need returning. And others undiscovered. 
await a hunter capable enough to find them. She smirks, her serrated teeth barely visible between her cracked lips. That sounds easier than fighting in the arena. If you say so. And just how many of these sacred objects am I supposed to find? They just assumed you will hunt with reckless abandon. And return all that you can, if only for the thrill of the pursuit. As for what is required, contenders are expected to return at least one relic sacred to the seeker, slayer, or survivor. Sounds good. Also, um, <clears throat> I'm just now realizing that uh, maybe computer role-playing games should say, say nothing instead of continue. I noticed before in our previous uh, quest tree that I had options, and one of them was to say nothing, which I assume is continue. <laughs> but um, it would make sense to, to actually just change the paradigm. Huh. This is a holdout over... <clears throat> excuse me, this is a holdover, I should say. Uh, from uh, from the previous game because the previous game had an actual button specifically for continue uh, Where it wasn't a, no a dialogue option. I don't know why they changed that um, Although it might have to do with the th they did develop their dialogue system since the pillars of eternity one uh, And it's different and whatnot whichever face best aligns with the hunter within you Does this mean the crucible has ex accepted me when do I talk to the faces? You survived the rite of passage, but you are yet shark bait to the faces. But now you can begin to demand their attention through your actions. She lowers her voice and leans close. She smells of sweat and peat. Each area of the island draws the attention of a particular aspect of Tuamawai. While you scour the island, watch as only a watcher can. She straightens. Speak with Angari, Keeper of Memories, in preparation for your hunt. He will set the path before you. Return with your trophy, contender, and may Tawamawai guide your way. She bows her head and turns away. Okay. Engrangrangrang, I don't remember the name. <clears throat> also, my voice decided that it doesn't want to be good. The Maw of Imdzenzenz. That's for extra perception and charm nearby beasts for... Oh, it's an ability. Yeah, I don't like that. Okay, you can, you can do away with that. Thank you very much. And also the Crucible token over here is quest item. Uh, grants Kazawari Call, or Kazawari's Call. Four target, minus 15% damage against the challenger. And self, plus 15% uh, damage against the challenger. Not really that great for me. Oh, it is a... Oh, yeah, it is great for me, actually. Can I, can Maya use that? Yeah, Maya will murder everybody. <laughs> Single target. My god, Maya will destroy. Maya will absolutely obliterate. That is a really, really powerful thing. Because it's a, a totem. Um, and we're using things like, you know, th stuff like this, basically. Uh, once per rest, things. Uh, we had another one, didn't we? Let's see. Trinket. Did I miss that? Huh. I have Rimmer Gand. I did, didn't I? Once per rest, the user and their allies become surrounded by the Eye of Rimmer Gand, granting them Veal Touched. They take less damage from and can't be critically hit by attacks without the Veal Piercing keyword, which is most of them. So that's, that's a pretty good one, although, sure, I can have that. And then things like this. Life Through Death. The user channels absorbing, or the user channels, not used as a transitive verb, just that's a thing, absorbing the defenses of all enemies in the area. That sounds like a good deal, actually. Yeah, I should have, should have paid attention to this. Because uh, these trinkets matter a lot. You see these? These are special. They're not, yeah. So the grants the final flame. The wearer creates a powerful explosion of fire at a location. Enemies caught in the blast take burn damage uh, immediately and over time. Allies in the blast are healed immediately and over time. That's lovely, actually. Um, let's put it over there. What else do we have? I want passives, though. Lost in time. The user traps an enemy in time while speeding time up for themselves. The enemy is locked in place, making them untargetable, while also granting the user a large bonus to recovery and stride. 
an interesting thing, but not necessarily something that I can feel is a good thing. A good thing. We also have betrayal over here. The user inspires rebellion in the enemies around them. These enemies are charmed for a short duration and have their might, constitution, and dexterity increased. Uh, it, the duration is only f tw it's, it's only very little. Uh, it might be good for me though. This is pretty good. This is pretty good. This is a pretty good one. I don't even remember where I got that, but it's it's fine. I will give this a good home. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Now, let's go have a chat, and hopefully not a ramble, with, uh, I don't remember the name. Engali, that's the one, who is over here. You have tasted what the arena expects of you. Do not disappoint. I will not. I never disappoint. I don't know what you're talking about. Engali is not here. Oh. Nial. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know where Engadi is. However, I'm out of time for the day, so I'll look for Engadi uh, in between episodes, and uh, in the next episode we'll, we'll, we'll be there. So for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Pillars of Eternity 2. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye bye.